Okay, section 4.4, rearranging equations. So remember, solving for a given unknown means we are going to satisfy the following. So all of the desired unknowns, so those are the n's, the x's, the a's, those letters and things, are all gathered on one side in the top, what we call the numerator position. All the whole numbers or decimals or everything else is going to be on the other side. The coefficient, which is the number in front of the desired variable, we want to try and make that a 1. It's not always written, but it's a 1. And we're going to call this whole process isolating the variable. So basically, is the desired unknown all by itself. And we've been doing this for a little while, but we're going to do a quick review. So let's do a little bit of warm up. So solve for the given unknown. So we have two questions, one with x and one with a. If you want to pause it and try it, you can do that. OK, so I'm going to work through this one. So 3x plus 8 equals negative 16. So I want to make sure I'm using opposite operations. So the opposite of adding 8 is subtracting 8 from both sides. So then my next line would be 3x equals negative 24. And then to undo a multiplying of 3 on the x, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And then I'm left with x equals negative 8. So now if we look at this for isolating the variable, there is a 1 that's written in front of that x. We don't have to write it, but it's there. The x is by itself. If you think of the placeholder underneath, the x is in the top location. So that's what we mean by isolating the variable. Okay, so let's try the second question here. Uh, we could do this a couple different ways. You could do distributive property, that's one option, and most people would probably do that first, which is absolutely fine. So we would have negative 6a plus 15. Watch those two negative signs interacting. Okay, and now I want to use my SAMDEB idea, that's my guide, so I'm going to go after this positive 15 or adding a 15, so I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. Then I'm left with negative 6a equals negative 36, and then again this is a negative 6 times an a. A lot of people mistake this for subtraction, okay, but this is a multiplication case, so I have to divide both sides by negative 6 and I'm left with a equals positive 6. Okay, and now as a check, and we don't do this all the time, but you should be at least understand where it, where it goes. Uh, if we take this a value right here, and we substitute it back into the original, we should see that the left side and the right side will be balanced. So let's just do a quick check. There's the negative 3. If I put a 6 in here, 2 times 6 is 12 minus 5 equals negative 21. Inside this bracket is a 7. Negative 3 times 7, I get negative 21 equals negative 21. Because the left side and the right side come out as the same value, the same magnitude, I know this is a correct answer. And you can do that for any equation that you're not sure if you're right. Substitute your answer back into the original, and both sides should be equal. It's that simple. I don't normally do it in the videos because it takes a little bit extra time. Okay, solve for n. So now I'm going to approach this one a little differently. Uh, I want to go after this dividing by 3 here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Please notice where I write this. I wrote this 3 in the numerator or top location because 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay, so I'm cancelling those out using an operation. So I'm left with n plus 7 equals 12 times 3, which is 36. And then I'm going to subtract 7. Okay, so those would cancel, and I would be left with n equals 29. Okay, and again, if we did a quick check, I could put that 29 back into the original. just like that. 29 plus 7, this is 36 on the top. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And again, you can see the left side and the right side have to balance. Okay, now here's where it gets a little different. If you are strong in your understanding of opposite operations, 
then what we're going to do today shouldn't be too challenging. The only thing we have to get our head wrapped around is the following. 2 is a symbol that represents a quantity of two objects, whatever they might be. 5 is a symbol that we are familiar with and it represents 5 of some quantity. So in this case, B is just some unknown quantity. So we're using a symbol or a variable B. We just don't know how much it is. And until someone tells us, we can't do any calculations with it. But that doesn't mean we can't rearrange the equation. So to solve for A, that means get this A all by itself. So to get that A all by itself, I have to subtract 8 from both sides. So I would be left with a equals, now I don't know what b is, so I just rewrite it, b minus 8. Now, I've solved for a, it's by itself, it's in the top location, it has a 1 as a coefficient. Even though I can't get a value on the right hand side, this is solved for a, and that's the next really big idea. So again, we're going to solve for a, we have a z on the right hand side, so I'm not going to get a number answer here, I'm going to get an expression. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add 5 to both sides, that's following our SAMDED sort of guidelines. Okay, now I'm left with 2a equals z plus 5, can't bring those together, they're unlike terms. Okay, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and it's both sides. It's important, so those will cancel, and I'm left with a equals an expression, z plus 5, all over 2. Now, if someone told me what z is, I could plug that number in for the z value, and then I could actually do the calculation. But the way this is, right now, this has been solved for a, and it is correct. Okay, solve for a. Now, this time, we got to be a little bit more careful. There's a whole bunch of letters here or variables, but I'm going to use the same approach. I'm going to use my SAMDEV as my guide. So the first thing I'm going to do is add R. I don't know how much it is. It doesn't matter. It cancels on that side. I'm left with A times B equals 3P plus R. And again, I'm not going to be able to come up with a number on this. Okay, the last step, I have an A times a B, so I want to cancel or get rid of that B. So I'm going to divide both sides by B. Those cancel, and I am left with A equals 3P plus R, all divided by B. And again, you can't come up with a number answer on this question, you can only get the expression. But A is isolated, it has a 1, and it's in the top location, I've solved for A. Okay, we're going to try a different letter, so solve for D. Okay, so if you look at this one, you might notice, is it already solved for D? You're correct, it is. So D is by itself, there's no work to do on this one. So this doesn't require any work, we've already isolated D. Okay, solve for Y. So DX, or sorry, 2X plus Y equals 9. So I want the Y all by itself. I've got a couple ways I could approach this, but I want to go after getting rid of this 2X on the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 2X from both sides. Okay, now this side, these would cancel, and I'm left with Y equals 9 minus 2X. But I'm going to do a little bit of a rearranging here, okay? And I want to point out that the sign that's in front of the term stays with it. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals negative 2x plus 9. Now, does that result look familiar? And hopefully it does. You should recognize that as a partial variation. Okay, and this is why we do this rearranging of of equations because we're going to tie it into our linear relationships. Okay, so once I've rearranged it, then could we look at state the slope and y-intercept for this relationship. So a little review. Remember the multiplier here in front of the x is my slope, and this trailing value here is my y-intercept. 
So the slope is negative 2 over 1, and the y-intercept is 0, 9. Okay, so the next one, you might want to pause it here and then try this yourself. So we're going to solve for y, and then we're going to go through the exact same process we just did. Okay, so we can do this a couple ways. I am going to take everything to the right-hand side except the 6y. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. I'm also going to add 24 to both sides. Okay, and then what I should have is these will cancel, these will cancel. I'm left with a positive 6y equals negative 4x plus 24. Okay, now, I haven't solved for y because it's not by itself. There's a 6 out front. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. Okay, and you can write this two ways. You could write this like this. That's one option. Or you can write it, let's see if I can get the back up here, back up one more, or you can write it like this. Because you're dividing everything by 6. You just don't miss any terms, so make sure you apply that to all of the terms. Okay, so that's another option. So now my next line, and I'm going to reveal those and just move myself a little bit more space here. Oops, let's undo that, grab that, move that down. Okay, so now if I go back to this, 6 divided by 6, there's my y isolated. That's what I wanted. 4 over 6, this piece right here. This can reduce to be negative 2 over 3. Okay, and then 24 over 6 can be reduced to just be positive 4. Okay, so now, <coughs> does that result look familiar? It should. This is our partial variation again. Okay, so that's a partial. And then state the slope and y-intercept. Well, the slope, again, is the multiplier in front of the x. Okay, and the y-intercept is that trailing value, 0, 4. Okay, now the key with this, and we're going to spend more time in the next few days, is for this information to be true down here, this y has to be isolated. That's the key. You can't have a number out front. You can't have any other terms on the left-hand side. This information we've been using down here is only true when the y is absolutely by itself. Okay. Okay, so there's a couple questions to try here. So remember, solving does not always mean get a number answer. That's a really big idea. So you can be asked to solve for things, and all you're going to get is an expression. Okay, thank you for listening.